Good afternoon, and welcome to episode number 599, the penultimate broadcast before the 600 mark tomorrow. Um, episode title today is Love is the Most Durable Power. And that's a quote tribute to Martin Luther King because this is MLK Day, so thanks for joining me, and I'll introduce myself first, then get into topic. So hi, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful, and high-achieving women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which inspires and inspired these talks over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And right now we're at episode number 599. Done this for a while. And the topic today is love is the most durable um, power in a parentheses in a relationship because I think the quote is something like love is the most durable power in life and I hijacked it <laughs> to say love is the most, power, most durable power in relationship because it is and I'll explain more about that and of course I did have hashtags of MLK Day and stuff because that is today so if you haven't seen my broadcast before by the way these are on Facebook Live first then YouTube and then podcast and I'll give you the links at the back end and which means I may interact with people in the broadcast and that's and I'll try remember to share about those people's comments when I'm talking so you know who I'm talking about if you are watching on YouTube I hope that made sense. So, um, and I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time in case you haven't seen my broadcast before, so make sure you follow me. So let's jump into the topic, shall we? So I'm using, a, as I said, I, I'm using a um, hijacked version of Martin Luther King's quote because it was apropos in what I was thinking about today, which is love. And in fact, a lot of people are talking about love and freedom today because those are two of, I would say, MLK's most um, overt expressions about life which is why we celebrate MLK today. And so I want to speak about love in this sense because for many people, it seems they forget this when they get into a relationship, as, as bizarre as that sounds. And I really want to speak to it from the point of view of a means of wholeness and a means of healing, as well as a means of communication. Yes, I'm going to throw a three, a three approach on this one. So let's see how this goes. And I uh, appreciate you being with me, by the way, and if you want to share this with other people, feel free to do so. Love is something that people don't really get. And I'm going to be really blunt about this. People are attach, attached to um, so much when you get into a relationship. It may be sex. It may be looks. It may be comfort. It may be convenience. It may be safety. It might be control. It could be a number of different things. But for a lot of people, it isn't what I would call love. Because love is one of these things that, well, like a diamond, has many facets. But one of the, some of the most prevalent aspects of love for me our acceptance, our freedom, our... Well, let me start with those two first. There was a couple of others brewing, but they're not there right now. So let me start with these two first. Since we're talking about freedom, which is one of MLK's um, hashtags. <laughs> but what's a bit better word? And in relationship, many people get into relationship for a need for something they want to get from their partner. They may say it's love, but nine times out of ten, it's something other than that. Again, it could be control, it could be acceptance, it could be these different things. And I want to use it in the sense that love, sorry, not, it's not usually acceptance. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Let me rewind slightly. In a relationship, to really go deep with another person, to be so in love with that person that you give them freedom to be themselves, and you accept them for who they are. These are skills that a lot of people don't understand. You know, they may say in the, in the wedding vows, to, to death was part and in sickness and health and rich and poorer. That's really what acceptance is a lot about. But when it comes to living that, executing that, expressing that, for many people, that's missing. When somebody gets sick, for example, sometimes the partner bails or doesn't even know how to handle it. They may not leave, but they shut down, they disconnect, they don't have a way of staying connected. If you really accept somebody, if you really do provide freedom, then you actually will be there for them in times that aren't necessarily pretty. And this is one of those simple things that sounds great in theory, but a lot of people don't practice this. So this is perhaps a, um, <laughs> I was gonna say come to Jesus talk? No, I'm Jewish, that wouldn't work. It's, it's a, it's a, reminder to say to you that if you're in a relationship now and you haven't been stepping up it may be time to to step up to the plate and stand in your truth in your heart in your loving with your partner 
to respect and honour them so they can be fully accepted, appreciated and free. For many people, relationships, this is not, again, not the framework. The relationship they've chosen is one that is more out of convenience or of comfort. And that what I'm talking about is going to stretch you beyond your comfort zone. And I've made this mistake in the past where I haven't done this, so I'm clear that I'm not immune to this. I've been guilty of it myself. But I want to bring this to the table as a conversation piece. One, because it's in the vein of what we're talking about today, or I should say what people are thinking about today being MLK Day. But also, it's it's something that I realize is, is undermining, or un, it is, it is undermining a lot of relationships nowadays. People have been playing at the surface of relationships for many years, and especially nowadays, there seems such a flippancy about relationships, such a um, I was going to say the word contempt, but that's not the right word I want to use. It's not that strong, but it's getting to that point where relationships aren't honored and respected the way they used to be. And part of this because we're evolving and growing, so that's part of the evolution that's happening. But also watching what's being portrayed in the media by a relationship choice that people make where they cheat on their partners or they abuse their partners or they neglect their partners, any, any number of different things. It, for me, removes the value of relationship from the table. If you watch my broadcast before, you know that I'm passionate about healthy relationships. I'm very passionate about my clients being accepted, being supported and actually attracting the relationship they desire. So this piece of the conversation is important for me to share because I'm very clear that some people have forgotten about this. Now, not you, but maybe somebody you know, has forgotten about what love really is and also what love can be in life. Because even when you're single, love is a powerful, um, I don't know if tool is the right word, but it's a powerful support structure and being a power put it that way it's something that we can use every day um, using my using yesterday example um, being an agape I noticed that there were times where love was expressed amongst people I was around that was more powerful than words it created a place of safety a place of comfort and a place of acceptance that for a lot of people they're missing in other places in their lives so being single let me back up a second being in a relationship isn't always about the cab isn't isn't the only place that you can be expressing love or receiving love because love is not, um, it's not sexually based, <laughs> first of all. It's not chemistry based. Love is something transcendent of that. And it's a container that we all get to play in when we want to. In fact, I've said this before, I think I posted yesterday about this, like love is the, love is the answer, what is the question sort of thing. For me, love is such a powerful tool, a powerful vehicle, a powerful power, powerful power, yeah, right, that we overlook it. And we also under um, underestimate it. And so this little piece of the conversation I'm putting out today is really to just to remind you that maybe loving can be more um, available in your life. You could love more and share more and express more with people around you, whether it's your romantic partner, whether it's your fellow family members or coworkers or social circle. You can express love more fully by being in your heart and loving yourself first. That conveniently brings me to a couple of things I want to put and share. <laughs> it wasn't intentional, sorry. I did. It, that's the way it works. So, um, if you're finding yourself out of practice with loving yourself, if you're finding that you've been too hard on yourself and you're not taking care of yourself, I have a little um, offering that I want to share with you, which is my, my guided self-love meditation. Um, it's an AM PM meditation with a workbook, guidebook, description, what you want to call that, that I have um, shared with a few clients. They've, they've invested in it and got their lives in order. It's a 30-day challenge as well. And I invite you to check it out. I'll put the link in the comments so you can check it out. Um, because it might be something that's missing and you could do some tuning up in your life to have more love available to you. Because the reality is love is something that we have available to ourselves that doesn't require anybody else at all. And I mean this from the point of view of really supporting ourselves in being more able to love and express love and share love. Well, it's got to come from somebody, somewhere. And if you don't apply it to yourself, it doesn't come out as authentically to other people. So loving yourself first is a powerful key. So I'll put the link in the comments. Um, the second thing is if this is something you're challenged by in relationships, and I know quite a people are challenged by this in relationships, love and relationships, some reason, some reason doesn't go together the way they thought it did. I can help you straighten that out. 
Um, I'll put a link in the comments as well for our discovery session, which is a free conversation between you and me, where I can help you get some clarity, some guidance, and the next steps to get where you want to go in life and love and relationship. I think that's it. I was, I've, I've been in the middle of rewriting something for my, um, <laughs> damn, I'm pitching stuff. Um, the Rocket 2019 playbook, which I'll put in the comments as well. I've been working on myself, as in I've been using it. I've got, I've got a couple of the pieces. I'm not going to tell you what they are. You have to do the workbook to find out what it is. Actually, no, it's, in, it's actually go to the page and I'll put the link in there for that. There's seven modules now. I've actually done, I'm, I'm able to doing three of the modules myself, like for myself right now. It's actually kind of fun. So I've actually gone back and re-edited and rewritten it slightly to make it more potent. So if you're looking to start your new year, and I know it's already the third week of January, but as a friend of mine said, the lunar new year doesn't start till next week with a new moon. So the real year doesn't actually begin till next week. So before you start the new year, the real one, the lunar new year that is next week, the Rocket 2019 playbook will help you set up your life the way you want for the next year. So that will put in the comments as well. Okay, I selfishly decided to put three things in my offerings in, my, in the comments. So my apologies if that was too much. Um, I think that's really it. I just wanted to just talk about love a bit more and about freedom because those are the fundamental things we talk about today. But it shouldn't just be one day a year. It's every day. So my question to you and your homework for tonight, yes, you're going to get homework, is how can you love more, how you can be more free, and how can you be more accepting with those around you and with the one in the mirror? And if you have any thoughts about that, questions, please put them in the comments below and I'll respond when I sign off. If this is Facebook Live or on YouTube, either one, you can watch them there. And I'll give you the links so you can find me. Find me I should say, I'll tell you the place you can find me after I sign off. This is done on my personal page, as I said at the beginning. It's a Facebook Live, which is, um, you'll find me at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day of the week at uh, facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays on Facebook go onto my business page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. And then I put them onto my YouTube channel because some people don't do Facebook. <laughs> if you go to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, please subscribe to the channel. And on there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine, which you can watch my broadcast there. And thirdly, I have a podcast which I'm slowly loading up right now with these broadcasts, so I've got a few of those up there now. If you go to iTunes and look for Messages from the Masculine, you can subscribe to that channel, and you can download the audio versions of these talks. So with that, I thank you for watching. Any questions or comments, again, put them in the comments below, and I'll respond when I sign off, and I will put the links I mentioned in the comments, as I mentioned. And uh, tomorrow is number 600. Yes, tomorrow is the big 600, as it were. So we'll see what that's going to be about. That's a whole, well, I'm going to say it. To be honest, every day has been a spontaneous talk. They've been scripted or planned, and sometimes I have the topic until right before 5 p.m. So I don't know what I'm going to talk about tomorrow yet. But it is going to be at 5 p.m. Pacific time. That'll be number 600. I invite you to join me then. And uh, we'll have some fun. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being with me. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.